This is a Lego machine I designed to rid the world's oceans of all the plastic, trash, and underwear that pollutes them. And I did it all in 24 hours. In case you're living under a rock, Mr. Beast and Mark Rober recently released a new earth-saving campaign called Team Seas, and for every dollar that is donated, one pound of trash gets removed from the ocean. And because I want to do more than just build a Lego machine, for every new subscriber I get for a month after this video is posted, I will donate one cent to Team Seas. I would do more, but YouTube isn't exactly paying me. To start off the ocean cleaner, I decided to use treads to scoop up the trash. The main idea is that this machine would be placed at the end of a majorly polluted river in order to stop the flow of trash into the oceans. The machine would then dump the trash off the conveyor belt and onto a large collection tray where it could be recycled and thrown away. There is actually a real life model like this that revolves around the same idea, and it's really, really cool. The main difference being that my design is located directly at the mouth of the river, whereas the Interceptor, the real life model, is implemented somewhere within the river. I began building at exactly 9 p.m. and I had till 9 the next day to complete this entire build. I used a blue sterilite drawer as my river and then built a gray frame around the back side to house the collection tray, leaving space at the front for the conveyor belt made of Lego treads to scoop up all the trash. Using smooth towels, I made rails for the collection tray to slide in and out on, and then designed the tray with a high back and low front in order to catch all the trash effectively. After that was built, it was time to move on to the conveyor belt. My original idea was to use rubber treads that LEGO uses on smaller vehicles, so I started to make a frame to hold them all. Very inconveniently, no axle I had was long enough to fit all four treads side by side, so I had to find a way to use multiple shorter axles to create one longer one. Luckily for me, though, the tires that go inside the treads have a large overhang, creating a sort of cavern that when two wheels are placed facing each other, leaves enough room to fit an axle connector. Using the method to extend the axle length, I quickly made a frame to hold the wheels on both ends to each other, but I was struggling to get them the correct distance apart to create enough pull to hold the treads flat, but not enough to start bending the axles. For those of you who aren't LEGO experts, Technic beams are the piece I was using to hold the tread structure together, but there is a very specific amount of spaces the axles can go, and none of the distances were working. My next solution was to use another Technic beam with an angle in it to create more distances to try and fit the axles, but none seemed to work. After a lot of trial and error, I eventually got one that seemed tight enough, but because using a connector and two axles is less stable than a single axle, and because there was no support structure in the middle of the tires, it bent the axle way too far inwards to even get the motor to turn. I eventually had to accept defeat and move on to my backup plan, hard plastic treads. Due to my unsuccessful approach at the conveyor belt method using rubber treads, I had to resort to using LEGO's hard plastic treads, something I had originally ruled out at the beginning because I didn't think I had enough, nor did I think they would fit. But thanks to a little perseverance and a lot of messing around with random parts, I discovered that they would actually be very good for this problem. Even though I only had two correctly sized tires that work with this type of tread, I played around with other parts until I discovered that the wheels I was using in the original treads worked just fine to hold the new treads in place. Something that probably saved this whole project. After unlocking the key to the conveyor belt, I added Technic beams on every other piece of tread as a way to catch all the garbage, which, by the way, is going to be represented by small Lego pieces, each of which I have tested to make sure they float. and it turns out that mostly all small Lego pieces float, which is convenient considering this whole project would be completely pointless if none of them did. With that finished, all I had to do now was fasten the conveyor belt on at an angle low enough to dip down into the water and high enough to clear the edge of the collection tray. This was very simply achieved with the same piece that so thoroughly failed before with the rubber treads. Then, by using some jumper plates and slightly bending my Lego bricks to work with the width of the conveyor belt, it was all in place. Now might be a good time to mention that electricity is not compatible with water, and Lego motors are no exception. Even though normal Lego bricks are completely fine in water, it is important to understand that Lego motors I am using for this build are not waterproof at all. I know right, pretty shocking, literally. Now if that pun isn't worth a sub, then I don't know what it is. 
In order to be safe and keep the water as far away from the motors as possible, I extended the axle that connected the motor to the conveyor belt, thus completing the first working attempt at my river cleaning machine. All I have to do is turn this controller to its slowest speed and watch as all the Lego trash gets sucked up into my fully functioning 100% flawless machine. Or I could if it was fully functioning and 100% flawless, but sadly it's not. If this was implemented into a real world environment, there would be one very important variable that I have no way of replicating with Lego bricks and a plastic drawer, and that's a current. The key component that a machine like this would rely on would be the flow of the water to push all the garbage into the conveyor belt. And because the water in my replica does not move unless pushed by the tread, the only flow is away from it. As each beam pushes out of the water, a small current is made that repels any Lego pieces about to be sucked up. But I wasn't about to accept defeat that easily, so in order to create less of an outward force, I geared down the motor to have a gear ratio of 3. We can calculate this by counting the number of teeth each gear has. In this case, our driver gear, or the gear the axle motor is turning, has 8 teeth and our driven gear, the one being turned by our driver, has 24 teeth. If we then put the driver over our driven, or 24 over 8, we get 3, meaning for every 3 rotations on the driver gear, there is a single rotation on the driven. My hope was that this would slow down the rotation speed of the conveyor belt enough that there would be no push away from it in the water, but though it was evidently less, there was still too much propulsion for the pieces to get onto the tread. My next three attempts were just as futile. I first tried to create a current by putting a propeller on the opposite side of the belt, hoping I would have enough power to push the pieces on, and after gearing it up just like I did with the tread to make the blade spin faster, it had very minimal success, more often flinging pieces out of the water than sending them into the trash collector. I then moved on to plan B, hoping that if I created a push and pull movement with a small wall opposite to the tread, the pieces would make their way into the collection tray. But yet again I was unsuccessful. This time instead of filking the pieces out of the water, it merely pulled them in the opposite direction I was hoping. This is because even though half the time the wall is pushing outwards, the other half the time it is pulling inwards, completely counteracting all the outwards force. In a last ditch attempt to get it working, with only a couple hours left, I tried to create a horizontal shaft with small Technic beams making it into some sort of elongated propeller, and though this was the closest to working out of all of my attempts, it was still unsuccessful. In the meantime, in order to reduce the amount of space the trash could float around, I made riverbanks on either side of the conveyor belt, hoping this would lower the amount of sideways flow generated by the conveyor belt, and for once, something went to plan. But after playing all my cards and still not finding a reasonable solution to create a man-made current in my man-made river, I realized by simply blowing on the surface of the water, I could propel the pieces forward with enough force to get caught on the conveyor belt. And with all that completed, all that stood between me and a fully functioning, trash-sucking, ocean-cleaning machine was giving the whole thing a makeover. And the best way to do that is with a time-lapse. After 24 solid hours, my machine was complete. And honestly, I'm extremely happy with how it turned out. Designing things to help save our environment sounds like so much fun, and I know what you're thinking. Our jam bricks, this is made out of Lego and helps exactly 0.0% of our environment. And while you'd be totally correct, this video is purely for entertainment, because obviously I can't actually make a Lego machine in life size. And who knows, maybe in 10 or 15 years, you will come back to my channel and see a video titled, Building a Machine to Save Our Oceans, and that time, it will be a real machine. It's all about the process, and you've got to start somewhere. That start for me is with Lego. Oh, and by the way, if you're watching this Mark Rober, you should definitely help me make something like this a real thing. I gave the whole machine a rounded and modern feel that every environmentally helpful machine deserves. And all things considered, it actually works pretty well. 
To simulate a very dirty, trash-filled river, I put a bunch of floating Lego pieces into the river and turned on the conveyor belt. True to form, they float away from the belt, but with a little nudge of air, they slowly but surely started to collect in the dumpster at the top, completely ridding the river of all its garbage. And even our minifigures love it. I love all things that help the environment, and even though I don't have a job and YouTube doesn't pay me money, I am pledging one cent of my own money to Team Seas for every single subscriber I get for the next 30 days upon the release of this video. So even if you don't have money of your own to spare, simply subscribing and maybe showing some of your friends this video could help out a ton.